Disclaimer, I am not an expert and this video is my personal opinion. The subject of this review is linked in the description. I highly suggest watching it in full and coming back here once you're done. I encourage you to take notes of your own and compare what you have with what I'm about to say. I made a scoring system to determine how valuable an answer is. 1 is the worst, 2 is bad, 3 is neutral, 4 is good, and 5 is the best. Let's start. On environment, I like how the pros and cons of mining is acknowledged. It was pointed out that there are sufficient laws to regulate the mining industry. However, there are implementation problems. How do you deal with this? And how will he reconcile the interests of the locals and mining businesses and make their coexistence mutually beneficial? On COVID-19, I like how vaccination is a priority. But the question is, what will he do with anti-vax folks who don't believe the science and statistics no matter what? I also like the concept of the government helping MSMEs through tax holidays, amnesties, etc. But how soon can this be done? Also, PPP or public-private partnership was suggested to aid with agriculture and tourism. So how will he ensure that the implementation is as intended? Oh, and of course, I support the decision to stop lockdowns. And lastly, I was hoping for technology to be mentioned since a lot of businesses have been conducted online since the pandemic. On poverty, it makes sense to prioritize creating jobs by supporting MSMEs, agriculture, and tourism. I'm just concerned as to how soon it can be done. And it's been mentioned that government funds have been realigned because of IUDA funds. What departments were affected in this realignment, and who gets to decide all of this? Is it possible for this information to be publicly available? On OFWs and migration, the creation of the Department of Migrant Workers sounds good. However, it's not an immediate solution. How do we address the social costs now? On social media and pornography, I like the mention of sex education. And I get the point of handling this issue on a social level, but I don't think that the government isn't able to do anything. Like for example, we can make a law dedicated to sex education. On rape-related abortion, I like the idea of empowering the affected women to make their choices. And I also want to promote self-defense education for women and rape consequence education for men. On drugs, the Noda Drugs Campaign and rehab facilities are traditional prevention and cure mechanisms. How do we step it up? I want details of how the rehab system will be improved. And most importantly, we actually share the same sentiments of treating drug addicts as patients. On Philippine debt, I want to know how exactly does he plan to revitalize the economy to pay off the national debts? How will he oversee the usage of debt funds? And of course, I want to know how assets will be organically generated to pay off debts. On the West Philippine Sea, I support the diplomatic solutions all the way. But I think military alliances shouldn't be left out of the picture since war is always a possibility. On presidential qualifications, eh, I don't think anyone can be president. The president should have no criminal history at the very least. Overall, we share a lot of sentiments as to how issues should be dealt with in theory. A recurring concern of mine is the implementation of his proposed policies because that's where most problems happen. Example, the martial law abuses. He needs to nail the implementation phase as well to get the support of the people. I don't think Bongbong is completely in touch with the normal citizens because of the privileged life he's lived. His biggest challenge as president is getting out of his father's shadow and fixing all the damage the Marcos family has done as decided by our Supreme Court. And that's it. Former Senator Bongbong Marcos got a score of 38 points. His knowledge and skill set tends to lean over issues that are controversial, which I guess could open discussions on solutions that were never there before. An unspoken requirement for presidency is people skills. If he wins, he should be equipped with the people skills that would allow him to cleanse his family name while solving problems at the same time for the next six years. I'd like to wrap this up by reminding everyone to continuously challenge their biases. Be a part of the solution by doing your own research, getting educated, and of course, using your voice to communicate what you've found. If you like this video, 
give it a thumbs up, share it, and let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you're interested in seeing more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you're always updated whenever I upload new content. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy, and of course, have a great day.